All right, uh, everyone, your host, Cy Smith, um, shooting this video here to talk about President Obama's, just his news conference he just did in wake of what's happened in both Minnesota and in um, Baton Rouge. And I just heard Spike Lee just say he don't know what the answer is. And um, I'm hoping someone can get this to Spike Lee. I love that brother. I love for him to hear this. Uh, and, and everyone, uh, people are gathering and marching all around the nation, um, blacks, whites, Chinese, you, Asian, you name it. And that's that's good e um, emotional responses. I, I see things differently. I definitely see us coming together, being the great nation we should have always been in terms of the melting pot of all different ethnicities and walks of life. I see that. I'm encouraged despite what happened, that we're going to get there. Uh, here's the solution, Mr. Spike Lee. Uh, the solution is $12. And I'm looking at you and I say that so people don't think I'm crazy. Uh, there's a significance with everyone donating $12. Everyone, millionaires, billionaires, you name it. It's a piece that allows widespread unity. Everyone can participate. And spiritually, if we can't be faithful of things that are small, it's a big indicator that you're not in position or mentally ready to handle anything bigger. So I say that because a lot of what we're dealing with, the 1% are, which are white, are the ones that control what we see all over. And, and it's not a black perspective. That's a European perspective who controls what we see. So when they say racism, uh, I contribute that to the 1%, not the average white person, European. The average European, I would say, might not have the right interactions with other ethnicities to have a broad perspective. It may be a narrow perspective based on how they grew up. So what I see is a police force that... Um, fundamentally may want to do the right fundamentally may have I don't like using the word racism who fundamentally may have biases and I say that because I think that's more appropriate biases than racist to me ignorance is more what we're dealing with more than racism I believe people who hearts are intent on tearing down, hurting someone based on their race, those are the races. If I have biases because of what the 1% European media has shown me about black people, that don't make me a racist. That make me an ignorant person dealing with race. Because I see this person based on what the media has said and what I've seen them say on rap songs and whatnot. I see them based on what the media is portraying. So I believe a real dialogue in America will be dealing with race from that perspective. We have something called Special Forces Strike Team 6 that deals with black and white race relations. And America is calling for Strike Team 6 all over. In all 50 states, Strike Team 6 need to be literally in every zip code so we can bring races together. In Chicago, we have 20 suburban towns, mainly Europeans, linked to 20 black zip codes. That's sort of Strike Team 6 can have Naperville talking to Inglewood, the lawyers in Naperville talking to the children of Inglewood that desire to become lawyers. That way they have a RTI. That means reason to interact. Right now in America, what's the reason to interact? Because in the 1960s when white flight took place, white people moved away from black people as the laws changed and made it where they can integrate. So that took away the RTI, the reason to interact. With Strike Team 6, we will have people interacting based on career objectives. That allows us to link forces based on what the careers are. That when That's when we become humanizing to one another. When that white lawyer and Will Matt get to know this, this, I mean, this white nurse and Will Matt get to know these black children that desires to become a nurse. And, and vice versa. White people can learn from black people as well. But the, the career professions allow us to have a reason to interact with each other. Those interactions will play also into helping people find jobs because once you know a person, then you can understand where they're coming from, their struggles, and add value. So I think Strike Team 6 in all 50 states will have a huge impact. Strike Team 5 is construction. 
we know a lot of unions and a lot of uh, Europeans that control the jobs. It may not be race. It may be the fact I want to protect my economic base, meaning I'm going to hire my son who wants to be a carpenter quicker than I'm going to hire your son as African-American that wants to be a carpenter. Um, so what I'm saying is the more we get people to interact with each other, the better off the relationships are going to be. And structurally in America, we have people separated. We have three Americas. We have rural America, suburban America, and urban America. And right now, structurally, rural America, because it's farming history, is benefiting from racist lawmakers, people who are in power, who make laws based on race, starving urban America of resources so that they can send their children to the prisons that replace some of the farms here in America. So we must call out the 1% or the racist Europeans that's doing stuff. Not all white people. We got to really be careful with that. The 1% love it when we say all white people because that turn off white people who have no racist bone in their body. They're like, what the hell? I ain't racist and you include me. You're excluding me versus include me into how we can fix this. And, and the 1% who's setting it all up, they get to smile because they know we're fighting amongst each other. We want to call out the fact that it is a European white system the, from the police, the criminal justice system, and, and, and the, the rural America having now these prisons, over 5,200 counties here in America, and a lot of them have prisons that lock up urban America. So we got to talk about pragmatically. The people out marching and rallying today all over the nation, thank you for that. But if we don't get organized, if we don't get organized, and I see hundreds of people out there marching, do we know the nurses, the teachers, the doctors, the lawyers, the, the junk haulers? Do we know who they are and what zip codes they come from? If we don't know that, we're missing an opportunity so that later we can get those children in these isolated, underserved neighborhoods linked to those people who are spending energy now marching. If you can't name four black businesses that you're supporting while you're out there marching, then you're giving this money to the Arab store owners who are in the neighborhood, don't care about what you're going to, the, the, the Korean-owned um, beauty supply stores, don't care about what you're going through while we marching on the the uh, what we believe is the white police that's racist other people are taking your money and not caring about you and this trust me trust me the african-american community in america if we stop spending money with a lot of people because we're more consumers than we are investors and other things unfortunately if we adjusted our economics a lot of people will pay attention they will be forced to pay attention for their own survival and so really all the marching is okay from an emotional standpoint but pragmatically it's what you do with your dollars is where you march your money at uh we must if we can't personally name four blacks we spend money with how are you just like chinatown just like greek town just like little italy's all over america how can you say black lives matter how can we say that how can we say black lives matter when we going partying this weekend to the all-white party and to the boat and to the casino to gamble and we not pooling our money together, giving $12 to what we're doing. And I'm going to say why that's important, because we must have a block by block approach to tackling this. Everyone lives in the zip code, whether they know it or not. Everyone is on a block, whether they know it or not, even those in rural America. And so what I'm saying is we have a system. That's applicable no matter where you go, block by block. And the only thing missing is the $12. I can sit here and go through 2,000 forms that we already have that will help us navigate all of the issues that people bring up. And, and I'm not excluding the organizations who are experts. they SMEs, subject matter experts, whether you in education, technology, business. We have a way to make certain that everyone have their issue supported by the rest of the block. But we must be anchored first. We have to have the $12 first so that we can have staff that we create account managers to support everyone else's mission. But now you got someone massaging, you get new money coming in, and you having manpower. So, you know, Spike Lee, the solution, I'm going to give it to you real quick. Strike Team 1 is dealing with black businesses. And I just talked about the economic. Strike Team 2 
is dealing with non-black owned businesses who don't care about black issues and that's making sure we got report cards on them. Strike Team 3 deals with all of our retired police and firefighters and our military. Strike Team 4 deals with all the education, first grade university all the way to 12th grade university. Strike Team 5 is our construction people. Strike Team 6 is black and white race relations. Strike Team 7 is dealing with all the food, the organics, the gardens, what we put in our body. Strike Team 8 is our legal and political system. We have all these attorneys who need to be getting these racist laws off the books and holding people accountable from a uh, legal standpoint and a political standpoint. Eight strike teams in every zip code all over America. If you're not giving your $12, we came to see this work. Thank you.